Hey, great win, uh, 2-0 in the SEC. Obviously, a uh, tough opponent. We came out. I thought uh, we did some things better than we did last week. We obviously made some mistakes uh, that you can't make uh, during the course of the game. So I, I think we'll try to get a lot of corrected again. Don't know. Uh, I don't know how well we played today, but you know what? I like our attitude. Our guys come out and perform, and we continue to make plays when we need to make them. And at, at critical moments of the game, we, we make the plays we need to make to win. Uh, we want to get more better, to be more consistent uh, as we out there and play. I want to thank all the Gator fans. Uh, that showed up today, a uh, great crowd, uh, exciting, you know, to be back in the swamp, exciting to be playing football back in the swamp, uh, you know, and it was uh, uh, a lot of fun out there for us, so uh, that way, so what do you guys got? Edgar, anyone? Let's pick somebody else. Yeah, it was good. I mean, Kyle had four catches today, which was pretty good. Kadarius, you know, we thought we'd get a good matchup there. We got some with good catches. Trent, you know, everybody, I, I, again, I think, you know, I mean, Kyle does a good job to me. He made a couple critical errors today, turning the ball over twice, uh, you know, and, and those were bad mistakes, um, to be honest with you. But, but uh, you know, uh, I, I think when we needed to, uh, we he, he took what they gave us, and we were able to spread the ball around to a bunch of different receivers. Uh, so I think that was a real positive and, and uh, take advantage of matchups that we had out there on the field and we did a pretty good job with it. Yeah, like I said, I, mean, I don't know if I'm happy. I, I, I think we got to get a lot better and how we certainly get a lot better in how we finish the game. You know, offensively, should have finished the game much sooner. Uh, defensively, have the opportunity to get off the field. I and mean, the, the first time we, we stopped them, right, I mean, was on the last play of the game there. So, I mean, we gave up 11 conversions today um, with get off the field opportunities, whether it's third or fourth down. Um, so we got to do a better job getting off the field. Um, but, happy, yeah, I'm very happy that we finished. And, and you know, like I said, it, it, when, when it came down to it, we made the plays to win the game. Can you put your finger on anything now that you see defensively when you talk about getting off the field when it's third down or fourth down? Execution, effort, you know, I mean, I think there, there's we, we had a couple mistakes uh, out there on the field uh, in some of the calls. I think we, we still have got to, you know, tackle a bit better, and we gotta, we got to get strained to the ball a little bit better. Um, you know, the attention to detail on all the little things that, you know, we're, we're still catching up on defensively. Matt Baker. Hey, Dan, that kind of jumps into my question. Um, what was your assessment of the defense's growth from, from week one to week two? Well, I thought we did some things much better, obviously, today than we did last week. Um, Obviously, making the plays to get off the field are going to be critical. Uh, I think the offense really, you know, though the offense, a lot of that, you know, off, twice we gave two horrendous turnovers on the plus side of the field. Uh, can't do that. You know, you just can't do that. And, you know, so I, that, that really put the defense in some poor positions at times. Um, so that was really disappointing by our offense today. And I think it, it reflected upon them being able to score points on us. Uh, you know, with those situations of the offense, you know, not 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 can doing what they're supposed to do, and if not score, uh, at least you know pin them and and never give them the ball on plus field position like we did a couple times today. Mike, go ahead. Coach, how surreal was it to be out there at the swamp for a big SEC game with only fifteen thousand? And the crowd seemed to make a pretty good amount of noise. Well, I, you know what? I really, like I said, I thank everybody that came. I think, you know, hopefully for the people that came, they got to experience what we did, which is a little bit of normalcy in their life. Uh, you know, to, to spend an October Saturday here in the swamp cheering on the Gators. There were a lot of cutouts there, too. I uh, saw a lot of the, the cutout fans there, and they were really excited, too. I saw a lot of smiles on their faces uh, the whole game. And uh, so that was pretty cool. And, uh, but, uh, oh, great to be back out there. Great to be playing at home. Great to be playing here in the swamp. And, I, and I'm really thankful for all the people that came out and got to see us play and, and cheered us on and, and um, you know, tried to give us as much home field advantage as they could. Also, Tom Brady and uh, Tom Petty were among the cutouts. Did you, uh, did you notice them? I saw Tom Petty. 
I didn't see Tom Brady. I saw me. Uh, I saw, you know, Tim and Demi Tebow. Uh, I saw Charles Howell III. Uh, I saw a bunch of ES, some ESPN personalities out there. Huh? Uh, Lee Corso and, and some of those guys were out there. Uh, so, never know who's going to come to a Gator game this year. It's going to be pretty exciting. So, was Giselle there or just Tom? <laughs> Got everybody silent on that one, didn't I? Are you back on? Yeah. Can you even hear me, Dan? Now I can. There you go. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah this, this is a zoo out there, buddy. Okay. Are you in quarantine or something or no? <laughs> I might be up to the day. You know, we'll find out. <laughs> um, so, to, back to the crowd for a second. I, I might not have heard you, but what did you think just in terms of the impact that it did have? And it was a pretty good clamoring. Well, it was. I thought they, they brought a lot of energy. They helped bring energy to the team, helped cheering the team on. I thought that was really a, a critical for us. It, it gives you the home field advantage. Hey, home field advantage this year is going to be defined very differently than it has been in the past. Uh, but, you know, every Gator fan that comes and cheers and supports the team, boy, I mean, they, they don't just try to make it loud and for the opposing teams, okay, which that's normally a big, big part of it. But the, but, but the uh, how they pick up our team is huge. You know, I mean, how they pick up our team, the energy they create with our team is huge. And I thought our, our, they did a great job picking up our, our, our team and giving them energy today. Just how efficient do you think the offense has been other than this fourth quarter? I mean, yeah, and I, yeah like I don't know. Not, not, I, didn't, I didn't think we played exceptionally well offensively today, to be honest with you. I thought we made some critical errors. Uh, in the course of the game, I think we, we I, I would expect us to play a lot better than we did today offensively. I, you know, I mean, I was, uh, you know, at times we did some really good things. Guys made plays. We distributed the ball well at times. But, you know, we had a couple three announcers. We had two turnovers. You know, I mean, we didn't, we missed this touchdown in the red zone. Uh, just little things that are really efficient offense where we're rolling that we're going to do. Appreciate it, Dan. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. How exciting was it to see Trent Whittemore, redshirt freshman and Gainesville native, score a touchdown his first game in Swamp? Well, you know, I mean, we, we've seen it. We see a, a lot of great things at practice all the time. Um, I'm sure it was, it was even more exciting for him than me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the uh, being a local guy growing up here, being that you know, growing up as a Gator, to have that opportunity is pretty special. But we've seen him, uh, you know, I mean, not just this year, but last year. I mean, he, he's a uh, he got he's a guy that finds a way to get open. Extremely intelligent football player. We can move him around on the field. And he's got great hands. You know, I think you saw his athletic ability also on on not just the touchdown catch, but the big catch over the middle uh, that he made. He's a phenomenal athlete. So. Um, you know, it's good. It's good to see us. You know, as we say, we keep rolling receivers through, uh, getting guys different catch, guys different opportunities to get out there on the field to continue to grow as a team. Um, you know, we're going to need that to create that depth as the season goes on. You're muted. Still muted. Now you're... Dan, can you talk about what Kadarius Tony can do for this team? Obviously, what he did today uh, was a big factor. They were probably ter taking Kyle Pitts away on one play they had three guys on. Yeah, I think I think KT does a lot. You know, I mean, I think he's. You see how he's grown. Uh, as a player for us, you know, in, in, in his route running and how he's the ability to get open, his consistency in his route running. Uh, obviously, he's still a threat with the ball in his hands. You saw that in the kicking game as it kind of they started to try to kick away from him during the course of the game. Uh, but, you know, he's a guy we can move all over the place, put him in the backfield, you know, motion him out of the backfield. And a lot of that shows to, you know, to be able to do all the different things with him. You got to be, he's got to be smart and he's got to be really not just uh, intelligent, but a smart football player as well and understand how to do the different things. And he really did a good job of that today. Okay. Thanks, Coach. Um, so nine different players caught passes today. Um, you know, how much does that add to your offense and how do you manage that? Ah, uh, but I mean that's a lot, I guess, because it's you know what what you look at is I think people look and say, okay, how are you getting the ball to this guy? How are you getting that ball to that guy? We don't. We call our plays, and we're going to take the matchups they give us. 
And, you know, I think Kyle understands that, does a good job of that. And, you know, we'll have certain get it to's to get guys the ball, but uh, we just want to run our offense and then execute it at a, at a high level and take the best matchups that they're going to give us. And uh, I think by the first game, we had 11 different guys who catch us nine today. It just shows that, you know, it is. It's, we're not a team that's just force feeding the ball to one guy. And it, it shows that we have the depth of the receivers. You know, well, let me see this here. One, two, three, four, five, six different wide receivers with catches. You know, then people wonder how we have four from last year's team going to the NFL, and now we have six with catches this year. We're, you know, it's not like we're one of these teams that just throws it to one guy. Uh, you know, we're gonna we're gonna spread the ball around to a lot of different players. Uh, you know, and makes it fun for them to know that hey, they they get the opportunity to get catches every single game. Thanks, Dan. Damian Pierce, especially on that first drive, really just kind of took over. What is he bringing to the team this year, and is this kind of becoming his unit? Well, I think he 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 runs the ball exceptionally hard. Uh, very physical runner. Um, I think he's played in the system now for three years, so I think he has a good understanding of the blocking schemes, where to hit the runs, how to how how to hit the ball, how to you know as we run certain schemes, where he expects them to the the play to open up and and uh, and hit the runs. So. Uh, but but again, I think you watch us. We roll those guys through too. You know, I mean, he, I don't think he had a catch today. But yet, you, you know, Naquan Malik had carries and catches. Uh, so uh, you know, we're going to keep rolling those running backs through to get different touches for guys. And then you mentioned kind of you know until things got rolling with the defense. Do you feel like the issues are fundamental or just kind of rust that needs to be shaken off? Uh, we'll see. I think it's a lot of lot of. I, I think it's a yes. It's a combination of a bunch of different things and. You know, and, and it's not one thing that's going to show on one specific play or one thing that's going to show 15 to 20 times during the course of the game. I think, you know, there's a couple different things. When you get to, to execution, when we get to tackling in the open field, when we get to making sure we get lined up properly, when making sure we get 11 guys running the football properly. Um, I think little just combinations of those things. Um, that, but 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 again, I, I don't know. I mean, it looks like you know in this game again another high scoring game. That's a little bit more high scoring than what most people are looking usually used to see in this time of year. And but I think uh, defenses like like the reverse this year. Defenses will start catching up as the year keeps moving forward. Thanks, Dan. Yeah. Hey Dan, um, Kyle didn't have a uh, catch in the second half. Just what do you think South Carolina did uh, to kind of take him away? Uh, nothing. I think we just didn't execute very cleanly, and you know, um, I think we threw it to him once. We had, a, we had a drop, a miss, a misread. I, we never. I don't think we got like, got into a very good rhythm in the second half at all, uh, offensively. And uh, you know, so a lot of that's going to be on me and play calling. Um, you know, but uh, in our execution, I just didn't think we had a very good rhythm there in the second half. A couple three and outs. The turnover was terrible. You know, I mean, just that. That's so, well, I don't know is is anything they really did or changed. They, they did the same thing in the second half they did in the first half. So um, we just didn't execute very well. And then you mentioned the defense making a play when it had to. The, the, you know, South Carolina was five for five on fourth down. Your defense has its back against the wall. Just where do you think they were at, maybe confidence wise, and what was it like to see them make that play at the end? Well, I think it's huge to make that play at the end. Heck, we could have run it, you know, but you'd like to finish the game about five of those earlier. Um, <laughs> But uh, no, I think, like I've said, I think we, we found ways to make plays to win games. You know, South Carolina, give them credit. They did a good job. I mean, you look at the plan they had today. Uh, you know, held the ball for 36 minutes. Uh, you know, I mean, kept, kept us, we ran, we ran 53 plays, um, you know, in the course of a game. That's it. You know, they, we had 6.6 .6 yards per, per play to their four. Uh, you know, they, they did a good job of converting, slowing the game way down, not letting us play. Uh, and get on the field to play plays. And so, um, you know, uh, I, I think that's all part of it right there. You know, but uh, the, the defense playing too many plays. Um, and we got we got to get conversions to stop to get off the field. And then offense got to execute cleanly. Thanks, Dan. Hey, Dan, just you talked about the sense of normalcy for the fans that came out today. How how difficult has it proved to be for these guys to lock in for through two games? You just lock in for 60 minutes. Well, I mean, we talk about bringing our own energy, bringing our own juice. It, it, it's 2020. It is what it is, man. So uh, get used to it, play it, and let's go. Let's go. So. Uh, <laughs>
I don't know, that it just is what it is. And, you know, it's not going to change, so we got to continue to do it. I mean, I think there's a great energy from our fans having there. The people that came created as much energy as they can. We're trying to create energy on the sideline uh, for our own guys to play. And I, I think our guys, you saw, we, I mean, we, we finished the game. We put, you know, and it's the final plays of the game, we're still playing hard. So it was a pretty good deal. I think that's me. Hey, Dan. Hi. Just wondering between the slow start for the defense in the first half versus that eight minute drive by South Carolina in the fourth quarter and them kind of dominating, which defensive performance concerns you more and how do you resolve it? Well, I mean, it's like everything to me. You know, I mean, like, I, like I've said a couple times, there's not one thing, uh, it's multiple things. Um, so, you know, I mean, one by four, we won by two touchdowns, so we made the plays we needed to. So, uh, every little detail of the game concerns me. So, I mean, I love you. I know you guys want to hear, okay, it's this or it's that. Every little detail of the game concerns me. Offense going three and out concerns me. That's really bad defense. Offense, offense is extremely responsible for playing defense. Twice we gave them the ball at the midfield, okay? And then in the, in the fourth quarter, we had a three, we, you know, we come out with a three and two, three and outs, I think offensively. So that's really bad defense played by the offense. Uh, we have opportunities to get off the field on third down on defense. We didn't. Uh, we make some great plays and then give up some plays that we should make. So there's some missed assignments in there. Uh, you know, I'll evaluate like, like every call making sure, but I know they're missed assignment, you know, there's gonna be Make sure we're making the right calls. We got to evaluate that. Make sure we're making uh, making tackles the right way. Making sure we have eleven guys running the ball. We're executing the right way. Offense has got to make sure you can't you can't come out there and go three and out. You can't do that. that. That's just terrible by the offense. So uh, we'll evaluate the offense, what we needed to do to fix that, to not have three and outs, to get first downs in the fourth quarter when we need to, to put the game away on ice. All of the above. Every every little aspect, every second of that game concerns me um, about us getting better. But. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I don't know I've ever been in a game where every second of the game didn't concern me about improving. So it, this week's no different than any other week, I don't think. Thanks, Dan. You're welcome. Dan, I mean, you guys have done a fantastic job from a COVID standpoint. Is tonight the night where you really got to hold your breath in terms of, like, last week, you're two hours on the plane ride back with these guys. You can Like, literally? It's a whole different deal now that they're home and, and in campus and whatnot. So I told them literally every time they go into a closed building, they need to hold their breath. So we'll hold our breath. Um, no. Um, you know, hey, I mean, our guys have done a great job, and we've been on campus. I gave them weekends off, all that stuff. I mean, we were home by 8 o'clock last weekend. I mean, I'm, I don't know about you. I remember me being in college. I don't want to give up too much, but 8 o'clock was just the start of things when I was in college. <laughs> and we were home at 8 o'clock last week, so every night concerns me. But our guys, I really – I uh, believe our guys have made really good decisions about things. Uh, they've taken it seriously. I think a lot of people, you know, I mean, people around Gainesville have really taken it seriously. So I hope we continue to make good decisions, continue to stay safe uh, in what we're doing and, and, you know, get ready to show up uh, in, on Monday morning and get ready to go with the players and get ready to go beat Texas A&M next week.